I will directly come to the point, okay? I will directly come to the point. Question, very important question. This is a question that's more important than religion, okay? If you were to die today, which I don't wish for, are you 100% sure that you're going to heaven? <laughs> See, the thing is, a lot of people have different ideas, right? Some people say, well, um, <clears throat> nothing will happen. I don't believe in all this. I'm not a believer. I believe that nothing will happen after I die. Hey, that is faith too. You have to believe that because you don't know that for sure. Some people say, I don't believe in heaven and hell. Okay, ask them, okay, where is Adolf Hitler? In hell. But you don't believe in heaven and hell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, <clears throat> number one, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Nobody is perfect, says the Bible. Does anybody here think they're, they're perfect? No. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Number two, all have sinned. Okay, the problem is we people, we compare ourselves with one another. If I compare myself to Hitler or Stalin, I'm a really good person. All of you are saints. But the thing is, when you compare yourself to a perfect morality like God, then all the sins, even the smallest sins that we do, make us guilty, right? See, if you on the street break a small rule, for example, you cross the light or something and the police catches you, and if you say, hey, officer, I did everything nice till now, I'm a good person, I kept every other law, will he let you go? No. If you've broken one law, you've broken the entire law, and he will punish you. you it, it, it may not be, the punishment may not be severe, but you will get a fine. Three, for the wages of sin is death. Okay, do you know what the word means, wages? <laughs> do you know what the word wages means? It's what you earn. When you work, you earn money as your wages. The Bible says when we sin, we earn death. And look at number four. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The Bible says a person will die a second time when the soul goes to the lake of fire. Okay, the Bible calls this eternal damnation, eternal destruction, eternal fire. There's no way out, you know. <clears throat> and look at the next verse, number five. It gives a list of all the people who go to hell. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Did you get the list? It says they're murderers, it says sorcerers. Hey, I'm not a murderer, I'm not a sorcerer, none of you are. But it says all liars. I've spoken many lies. <laughs> and you know what, till I die, I will never be perfect. As long as I'm in this body, I can never say in 20 years I can be perfect. Can anybody say that? No. <clears throat> I've, I've even done worse things than lying. I've spoken bad words. Yeah, I've hurt people. Of course, not in not like if you imagine. Yeah, I, I, we'll we'll come to that. Yeah. See, the thing is, of course, you are you're not a murderer. I'm not a murderer. No, no. <laughs> yeah. It says idolaters. Yeah. So all Hindus will. I will come to that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. <clears throat> See, even, even, if it, even if you put aside idolaters, it says liars. That includes everybody. Yeah. Right? That includes me, Christians, everybody. See, the thing is, but is that a good news? See, according to this verse, every single person, irrespective of whether you are Hindu, Christian, Muslim, every person is going to hell. But is that a good news? I don't want to come to people and say, hey, you're going to hell, congratulations, have fun. You know, does God want everybody everybody to go to hell no. look at the next verse for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord see God wants us to have eternal life he wants us to go to heaven eternal life is life outside this time outside this body it is not hell but it is heaven he wants us to go to heaven and he says it is the gift it's a gift I'll give an example what's your name Anju, okay, let's say it's your birthday and I give you a box of chocolates 
and I say, it's a gift. Now give me five euros. Would that be a gift? Okay, let's say a second example. I say I give you a box of chocolates for your birthday, you can have it, buy. But you have to wash my bike. Would that be a gift? Let's take a third example. Let's say it's your birthday, I give you a box of chocolates, and I say buy, you can keep it, cheers. But then 10 months later, you did something wrong. And I come to you and say, you're not a good person, I don't like you anymore, give me, ba give me back the box of chocolates. Would that be a gift? A gift is something that you receive for free. And once you have taken it, it's yours forever, right? You are the owner of it, that's what a gift is. And God is telling here, I will give you eternal life, this ticket to heaven, as a gift. But wait a minute, you have to get into religion, you have to get yourself baptized, you have to go to church, you have to always tell the truth, you have to, be, you have to leave your old life aside. If he puts those conditions like that, would eternal life be a gift? But isn't that what a lot of people believe? Hey, if I have to go to heaven, I have to do this, I have to stop doing that, I have to stop doing this. But that doesn't agree with what God has said in the Bible. <clears throat> See, if it depends on how good we are, of how obedient we are, nobody is going to heaven. Nobody is perfect. <clears throat> Did you understand? Right, okay. So the question is, okay, how do I receive this gift? Where is it? It is not packed in a box somewhere. Where do I receive it? Look at the next verse. Number seven, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Okay, I'm sure everyone has heard of the name Jesus, right? See, the Bible says 2,000 years ago, God came into this world. His name was Jesus. He lived a perfect life. He always spoke the truth, okay? See, imagine you're always telling the truth. Do people like you, right? They hated Jesus because he was always telling the truth. And what did they do to Jesus? Crucified. They crucified him. They put him on a cross. Right? And the Bible says, next verse, look at that. Verse number eight. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says that Jesus died for us. He took our sins upon himself. Whatever we deserve, our punishment, he took it upon his body. <clears throat> He doesn't want us to go to hell. He saw us and he said, no, I don't want people to go to hell. I love them so much. I'm going to take this punishment upon my own body. And he died a horrible death on the cross. They spat on him. They whipped him. They nailed him on the cross. They were mocking him. And the Bible says when, we, when he was on the cross, it was as if, you know, it was our, our place. It's what we deserve, but he took it because he loves us. And he died a horrible death, and he was buried for three days. And what happened after three days? He right, resurrection. This, the, that is why we believe, um, that's why we, we, we celebrate Easter, you know, Good Friday and Easter. And he appeared to his disciples, he showed his wounds, and he said, look at me, I'm indeed risen. Look at the next verse, 9. <clears throat> for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What is the condition to have everlasting life? It says, whosoever believeth. Does it say whosoever goes to church and pays money and stop, stops drinking and stops smoking and all this stuff? No. Just believe. See, I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say Professor Kirscher gives you a task. Right? And he, say, he tells you, I believe you. What does that mean? He trusts that you will finish it. Right? To believe on Jesus means to trust him, that Jesus is able to save me when I die. He will not send me to hell like how I deserve it, but he will receive me into heaven. When you believe that, whosoever believes, you have eternal life. You get this ticket into heaven. Let me ask you this. To go to heaven, is it difficult or is it easy? It's super, super easy. All you have to do is believe. Look at the next verse, 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If you say that I can go to heaven by being a good person, by doing good things, nobody's going to heaven. It's only as a gift you can receive it. Okay, and if you say, the 9, it says, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me ask you this question. How long does everlasting long for? Forever. 
right? There's no end to it. That's what everlasting means. So if you believe in Jesus and receive everlasting life, you have it forever. And if sometime in the future you're not a good person, you're not living a good life, and God says, hey, wait a minute, I will take back your everlasting life. Was that everlasting? That would be temporary, right? See, if God gives you everlasting life, and if he takes it back, that makes God a liar. But look at the next verse, 11. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Right? You have everlasting life when you believe. It can never end. Look at the next verse. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Let me ask you a series of questions. Do you believe that you are a sinner? Have you sinned in your life? Yes. I too. Right? Until as long as I'm in this body, I will sin. And the Bible says, because of this, we all deserve to go to hell. But what should you do to go to heaven? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Should you do anything else? No. Only believe. Because no matter what you do, it can never be enough. Right? So a lot of people ask this question. Okay, it's so easy. I just have to believe in Jesus, right? So can I do whatever I want? Can I live however I want? See, the thing is, after believing in Jesus, if I live however I want, God will punish me in this world, in this life. If I say, okay, I can do whatever I want, I'll go shoot somebody, I'll go to prison. Okay, I can do whatever I want, I can do drugs and get drunk and do whatever I want. God can send me a disease. God can take away my job. God can cause a hacker to hack into my account and steal all my money. My life here in this world will be miserable if I don't obey. See, the Bible has a lot of laws, rules of how we should live our life, but they are for our lives, for our benefit in this world. But none of these will get us into heaven. It's only by faith in Jesus that we go to heaven. <clears throat> Look at this next verse, 13. It's a big one. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Who are these people? These people are actually Christians. They believed on Jesus and they did a lot of good works. And Jesus is telling them to go to hell. <laughs> What's wrong with these Christians? The thing is, when I die and when I go to heaven and uh, Jesus looks at me and says, why should I take you into heaven? You know what I would say? I would say, Jesus, you promised, you said, whoever believes in you comes to heaven. I believed in you. I trusted in you. That was the condition. But what did these people say? Lord, we did wonderful works. We did that. We did this. What were they trusting? They were trusting in their own works. They were trusting in their own goodness. And Jesus said, I never even knew you. The only thing, trust Jesus, 100%, plus, minus, nothing. Only trust Jesus. Now, let me address this. A lot of you are from different backgrounds, right? Different Muslim or Hindu or whatever. You might be, let's deal with it. You might be a little, getting a little bit offended, maybe. What is this? Hey, I have been taught all this my whole life all this culture and everything. This is very different from what you're saying. I do get it. See, I will tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in a Christian family, okay? And I always thought, because of what pastors and preachers used to preach, I used to think that if I don't come out of my sin, if I don't stop sinning, that I'll go to hell. And I always had this fear. Whenever I sinned, I thought, oh man, I'm going to hell. My parents will be in heaven and I'll be in hell. And then I came to a point, I said, I will not listen to anybody. I will not listen to any pastor. I will only read the Bible. I will only listen to God's voice. And then I realized, hey, Jesus paid it all. I'm not going to hell. You know, and that was a freedom for me. Although I was born and raised in a Christian family. See, if you're especially coming from a different religion, of course, you must be having other role models and stuff like that. I'll, I'll give an example. Let's take some of the most recent famous people. Mother Teresa or Mahatma Gandhi. People celebrate them, right? These guys did a lot of good. They helped the poor people. 
See, uh, Mother Teresa is already venerated in the Catholic Church. There are people who pray to her. Okay, and I'm pretty sure in India, 100 years later, somebody will make a god out of Gandhi and a temple, right? So, but let me ask you this. Would I trust them to take me into heaven? No matter how good and famous they were, I would never trust Mother Teresa to take me into heaven. I would never trust Mahatma Gandhi to take me into heaven. The only person who died for me was Jesus. He's the only person I would trust. And Jesus says, Jesus saith unto him, 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If Jesus said, I am God, worship me, a lot of people will not have any problem. But the thing is, Jesus said, be only. That's when the problem came. Oh, how can you say that? And Jesus said, I alone am the truth. And people killed him for that. You know? So the last verse says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Before I uh, explain that, let me tell you this. A preacher who tells you the truth, whether or not you are offended, he loves you. A friend who tells you the truth, whether or not it offends you, he loves you. There are so many preachers and pastors in this world who will tell you what you like to hear, who will sugarcoat things, or they're very careful about what they tell. They, they don't love you, they love themselves. They love their money, they love what people think about themselves. Professor Keisha is arranging this event so that you hear the gospel. I'm coming all the way to tell you the gospel because there is a place called hell. And I believe that. And when people don't believe in Jesus, they go to? And I don't want that because we have love for people. And we want to tell this story, we want to tell the gospel the way it is so that you can escape from hell and be sure that you're going to heaven. And the Bible says here, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, right? See, I'll give an example. If I give you a gift, what would you say? Thank you. I'll give an example, another example. If Jesus were here in person, and if you ask him, Jesus, save me, give me eternal life, would Jesus give you eternal life? Why not? Of course, anybody who asks him, he'll give you. All you have to do is ask him. Open your mouth. The gift is there. You just have to ask it. If you win a lottery, you have to go and ask it. Hey, give it to me. If you just keep it with you, you won't get that money. right? So what I'll do is, if you're sitting here and whatever I, may, whatever I said made sense to you this evening, I want to be sure that I want to go to heaven. I want to be like a child and receive this gift. You know, I invite you. I'm going to make a short prayer. And if you want... You can repeat after me. It takes less than a minute. You can verbally repeat after me or you can pray in your heart. It's up to you. Okay? Let's close our eyes. We make a small prayer. We ask Jesus to give us eternal life. Dear Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe that I've earned hell. I believe that you died for me. Please forgive my sins. I know that you're alive and that you hear my prayer. Give me eternal life. When I die, please take me into heaven. I trust only you, Jesus. Not even myself. Thank you. Amen. Great. All you have to do was call upon the name of the Lord and you have eternal life. You don't have to be worried about death anymore. You know? Of course, there are so many Bibles. If you want a Bible, I can give you one. Yeah? It's, I have it in different languages. Just talk to me after this, uh, this program. And uh, I'll just ask one question, okay? After this event, I'll say bye-bye and I go back to Leipzig. And we never hear from each other. We will never meet again in this world. Where will we see each other again? Amen. Yeah? So that's a very good news. And if some of you were sitting here, you couldn't make that prayer because you had your buddy next to you. I was, uh, but, but you really want to mean it. You can come to me later and I can help you call upon the name of the Lord and make a prayer. To get saved is really, really, really easy.
right? And you have eternal security. 